Hi, uh, today we're going to do a wash-in of Cassidy here. Uh, if you've been following the series, this is, was started out as a drawing, transfer, and now we're going to apply some paint onto a toned canvas. I am using Liquin, as you can see here, as my main medium. Uh, I'm using Burnt Umber. Um, I don't use any linseed oil, but you should have a little bit just in case your paint is a little on the thicker side uh, where it doesn't have much oil in the pigment. Um, also, just to thin my, to actually clean my brush, I'm using Terpenoid, uh, just simple stuff. And I'm going to keep this uh, video on as full time, which means I'm not speeding it up. Um, because I want you guys to see, it's it's only about 30 minutes of painting. Um, okay, so right now I'm adding a little bit of the uh, the liquid into that mixture, and it's going on relatively thin. Uh, it is transparent, but I think what I do is because I'm not crazy about the uh, this was used like a. It's, it was a Winton burnt umber, didn't have the depth that I wanted. So you'll see me put my paintbrush down um, right now, and I'm going to head over to get some raw, uh, some good quality raw umber and mix that in with my burnt umber. There's nothing wrong with using the two different umbers, it's fine. Um, you could use both. And so basically, um, I'm just trying to get a richer, deeper color. And I think it's really just, you know, good paint will have good, better coverage. Okay, so this is actually a, a Winsor Newton professional level. Um, and it's covering a little bit better. I wanted to go darker, faster. Um, I'm not looking for, this is basically a grisaille. Um, just the addition of that other color does not make it um, a multicolor or two-color uh, or two-toned painting. Um, umber is umber. One is a little warm. One is just a little cool. Okay, the raw being the cool, the burnt umber being the warmer of the two. So now, since my canvas is toned to an average skin tone, um, I'm really concentrating on getting the half tones. And the shadows established here in this in this process. So you'll see I'm just painting like directly over things. Now the drawing underneath is good enough, it's strong enough, where um, and it's dark enough because I did go pretty dark on that, uh, where I didn't really mind and and I had no you know concern about uh, me going too dark in any any area. Um, and you'll see what will happen. Uh, I'm using a, it was a real cheap, um, uh, that, this brush right here. Um, it was, it was a stiff nylon brush. And, let's see. Yeah, it was a stiff nylon brush, which was great for moving this paint around just enough. I thought like a bristle wouldn't give me the coverage. Um, bristles are good when you're painting more opaque color. Uh, when you're painting washes, usually you have to have something that's a little denser hair. So I would use a synthetic because, again, it's just really a wash-in. Uh, you know, this brush is kind of like a workhorse. Uh, you'll see that I do switch over to a better grade um, sable brush later on when I wanted to paint some of the softer gradients and uh, you'll see you'll see that I think it's a darker brush it's a black handle now here I'm just softening the edge I didn't want like this paper hard cut line there um, yeah, I apologize I think we're getting a little glare on, on the shadow side there but um, it's okay at the end of the painting I'll actually have uh, you know this painting finalized um, now you're probably wondering well why are we doing all this why don't we just go right into the final paint well if we were doing an alla prima painting which means all in one session yeah we would definitely 
I would not be doing this. I would be painting in the color of her hair, the flesh tones, everything would be established. But this is not a la prima painting. What we're going to be doing in this painting is we're going to be working our way up to a more, I'll say, academic approach to, uh, to this, uh, where we're going to have an underpainting, um, which this is basically a grisaille. And, um, and what this helps us do is, it, well, it establishes a blueprint of where the lights and darks are going to go. Now, they, I'm pointing out to where the um, half tones will be in this picture, and they're going to be very, very subtle. Okay, going back to my last thought, um, yeah, they're just going to be a blueprint. The, 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 the tones that are being put down or value. Value and tone is the same thing, so you'll hear me say both. And, um, and we're trying to just get a value pattern established for this portrait. And um, now this is not set in stone. This might, these shadow shapes may uh, be tra um, transposed. They might be moved. They might be light and they might be darkened. Um, the values that we're putting down are really just, okay, it's just a guy. Again, it's a template as to when we start to put down our paint um, in a more opaque way. Um, working a little, little more transparent in the shadow. That's why I'm taking time to try to get some of the, um, some of this paint just covering a little bit more, because I want to have a, um, I want to have my the dark areas dark. Okay, when I start painting, I don't want to paint and see some, you know, some of the canvas color coming through, or just having to do this process when I'm doing my finished layer and basically this painting will be painted primarily wet into wet. Most of the major shapes and things I'll probably take um, like one whole day to paint this and, and that may go into uh, possibly two videos. Okay, the block in and then the finishing. All right, so uh, a head, you know, this head is quite small. It's not life size. You can tell by the size of my hand. Um, I think her whole head is maybe eight or nine inches, uh, maybe nine inches um, tall from chin to the top of the head. Now you see that uh, because there is a very specific drawing underneath, um, I don't have to be as careful um, around the edges. Well, this is the whole idea here is, uh, you know, we want to we want to keep the integrity of the line because we spent the last three weeks trying to get the, the line and the form just right in this picture. Um, we don't want to mess that up at this point, right? We want to try to keep that line as, as uh, as delineated as possible and uh, we're just adding a little bit more tone um, and I think at some point I just mix the two burnt umber and raw umber together um, I'm just doing big broad strokes of everything the eyes the shadows you know where where those sh uh, shadow shapes lie around the eye the eye socket is being set back a little bit now the cheeks i'm just adding a little bit more trying to try to get a definitive line actually what i'm trying to do is is match it up with the um with the with the uh, the cheek the you know the, the cheekbones and everything i'm trying i'm trying to get a little bit of symmetry there um it looks a little you know flat and it, and it will um, until I now I, I move over to the uh, the bristle brush. Now this bristle brush, I'm sorry, uh, this is a sable brush. This sable brush is kind of on its way out. It's getting a little splayed at the end, but it's perfect for this. I'm actually I use this brush when I do pencil and charcoal drawings. Um, after of course it's clean and free of oil. Um, 
what it does is it just gives me like a little bit of a blending and um, I think at some point you will see me bring the uh, fan brush out now the fan brush isn't really uh, and we'll talk about that later when we get to that point but right now I'm trying just to establish some half tones in the light now now you'll see that I'm going to be going back and forth I might I might even use my paper towel uh, right at this point just to kind of soften just to get that value a tiny tiny bit lighter than it is so basically what I'm doing here is I'm really redrawing these shapes back in okay after doing my full drawing and uh, and now working in these um, uh, these these darks and half tone the shadows and half tones uh, just a little at a time um, I'm not trying to jump in too quickly I want to work up to that you know those those darker shadows you see that I literally I keep going back and also watch the way the brush is putting the paint down sometimes instead of painting it on a basically on a, what would be a diagonal sometimes you have to actually lay the paint down like that almost like on a uh, horizontal stroke and sometimes instead of pressing down too hard um, which would lift the paint up sometimes we just have to have that brush glide over again this is a softer uh, bristle brush it's actually a flat and I think this was like from the Blick series yeah it's like uh, the fine red sable and um, it's a number eight but it's a flat and it's uh, like I said it was a little splayed out but it's fine And here I'm starting to model around the jowls and the, and the chin. Um, trying to take, you know, I'm trying to get a nice uh, gradation of the light from the side um, down to, I don't think I put any um, half tone around the top of the forehead on the right side. Um, I don't know why I didn't do that, but... Uh, because I don't really see much there. I see that I see a heavy shadow, which I'll go back and uh, and work on. But here now, um, uh, I keep I keep dipping into my uh, liquid, okay. And what's going to happen is the liquid actually starts to sort of uh, get a little bit tacky, very slightly. This is only 30 minutes of painting so it's not going to tack up completely but it does start to solidify just a little bit like i can feel that okay some the paint won't come off and most likely within maybe two three hours uh this will be dry i can actually paint over this without even worrying about that uh that umber um coming up in in the uh, in the final painting I don't know what I was doing here um, apologize for that little lull um, oh okay so yeah I grabbed my uh, palette knife and now I'm just adding the uh, liquid directly to that raw umber and I'm gonna add some of the burnt umber together so I'm making sort of a neutral tone burnt and raw umber together okay which is totally uh, legitimate to do um, it just kind of neutralizes one another so it's not too cool and it's not too warm so here coming back in now I'm starting to look out for that cranial ridge there getting a little bit of a roundness um, you'll see that she's quite uh, at this point she's a little blocky still trying to get those those values in the hair to be a little darker again look at the way the, the paint goes on sometimes it has to be a horizontal stroke it can't be a lifting can't be um can't be careful not to press too hard sometimes just running it over and just leaving it 
okay because that's the color you want um, once this dries the beauty of that is now we're going to have an underlayer uh, and that underlayer we can you know pretty much paint over opaquely or semi-opaque you can let some of this color come through later on if you if you want to um, and uh, yeah now that, that background you could probably I would probably soften that in a little bit more and I think I'll probably do that when I start painting when I start getting some of the colors I probably will not want to have it that stark on the shadow side meaning where the hair touches the background okay again going back restating getting darker where I need to um, these darks aren't uh, exaggerated they really are it's it's very deep in here the video might make it look a little darker than it is uh, but it's not um, you know the thing is we have to make sure that we get our if our shadows are too bright then that means our skin tones will be too bright and even though this is not a full value painting um, we still want to make sure that we're, you know, very close to the averages that we're going to be painting in, okay? Because if we go too dark, and if we key everything too dark, if the shadows were too dark, then the half tones will be too dark, and the skin tones uh, would be too dark, and, and we'd be going into the realm of painting too much half tone on this painting. Now, the reason why we tone the canvas to our flesh tone is because we don't have to paint that flesh tone all we're really concerned about here is going from the shadow to the half tone in the shadow um, and then to the, the half tone in the light area and maybe a very subtle transition tone which we see around on the cheeks around the nose not a lot happening there okay um, again, it's just just to cover the canvas so that when we go to paint with our opaque paint, um, I will be definitely painting this on an easel, without a doubt. This washing was done flat, so not the best way to paint, um, but I wanted to try to get a good image for you guys. And, uh, and you'll see, I don't really do much with the paint, you know, I'm going basically going back and forth um, you can see where I'm trying to get some darks but then um, keep an eye on that you'll you know when you are looking at this painting and if you want to look at it a second time just look at what I do to get some of the half tones and I think what I do here is I, I get um, I use a little bit more liquid I see like right in here I try to get it a little lighter and I think I'm going over, yeah, so what I'm trying to do here now is I'm just trying to get a little darker without getting too dark. And I think I do something with that um, keystone ridge in there, that separation. And you'll see um, when I get to that later. That's the separation between the eyebrows and where the base of the, the bridge of the nose start. Okay. Um, usually there's some form in there okay again I'm restating that dark I really want that dark to um, really be strong okay again if that dark is is too light everything else is going to be too light and I'm not going to have full gradation okay in my final painting um, I'm keeping it rather sketchy you can see um, there's really not a lot of soft modeling in this this is pretty crude actually but it's to the point and it establishes a nice value breakdown for us okay um, can you do these things a little bit more to a finish absolutely I mean some painters will start this get this this process so finished and then continue to paint very thin layers over we're going to be painting a little bit more opaque only for the learning experience and learn how to mix the color mix the you know especially around the, the gradients like the cheeks the nose the forehead um, places like that and just generally all over and how to uh, 
mix mix the paint um, and also the color uh, you guys can you still use your black and white photograph for this okay uh, this is all to my, my students um, because the black and white photograph well you don't need color because well you're not really doing color you're doing value okay so I would stick to the black and white reference for this um, the reason for that is uh, if you start looking at a color picture right now you may misjudge some of the values as being too light because sometimes like well her Cassidy's complexion was slightly ruddy or pink and sometimes those pink transitions and those subtleties sometimes do not translate out and what happens is they have a tendency of um, of people painting them or interpreting them a little too too light um, and then seeing in the shadows everything basically when you're working with a color photograph uh, the interpretations or the observations uh, sometimes